Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Amy Nye with the Sunlight Foundation. We just want to welcome everyone to um, the last of our three-part webinar, uh, three-part webinar series with INN. Um, and if Denise is on the phone, feel free to unmute yourself and she can talk a little bit more about why we're doing this. Yes, thanks Amy. This is Denise with the Investigative News Network. Um, for those who aren't familiar with us, we are a um, consortium of about 100 nonprofit newsrooms. Um, and our members include the Sunlight Foundation and um, a couple other organizations that provide um, some of the data that you've seen in these webinars as well, um, the National Institute for Money and State Politics and the Center for Responsive Politics. So we're just really happy to be co-hosting these and to help our members get the word out about these. Um, these tools, and we really hope that these these um, three webinars have helped all of you and and your newsrooms to get acquainted with these tools, and ultimately to help increase transparency in politics. So thanks to Sunlight um, for all the work you've done on these. Thanks to all of you for being here, and back to Amy. Thanks, Denise. And just for a quick housekeeping, just reminding folks to mute your phone by hitting star 6. And you, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, you can hit star 7 to unmute your phone. And also feel free to shoot us any questions on the left-hand column of your screen um, and just write them in there. And we will get back to you as well throughout the presentation. Uh, so as Denise mentioned, this is the last of our three-part series, and today we'll be talking a little bit more about APIs and data sets for the newsroom. And in particular, we're going to be focusing on the different uh, data sets that we offer here at Sunlight Foundation. So here is a, on the screen you'll see a quick listing of uh, the um, numerous uh, types of data that we have available, and also the links to the different uh, repositories for that data or, or for uh, those different tools. And uh, so we'll be going through uh, these different tools. And just as a quick around the table, uh, we have Lindsay Young, um, we have Jacob Fenton, we have Bob Lannon, and we have Kathy Kylie and Evan McKinder from uh, various uh, reporting and uh, labs team. And just uh, to get started, um, if you have never been to our APIs or have any questions about them, you should definitely go to sunlightfoundation.com slash API. This is where all of our data lives. And if you need a, um, a quick primer on how to use our APIs, we have a video on the right-hand side here. That is a really good introduction to the resources that we have and, and why uh, do we build uh, these types of uh, data, uh, data sets available. And just as uh, also as an introduction too, for uh, folks who are familiar with the tools that we have at the Sunlight Foundation, and uh, for those who have come to the previous two webinars, uh, we have lots of different resources available. But before we even think about creating the different tools and resources, we always think about the data first. Um, so we aggregate and standardize that information, and then we uh, make it public. Uh, so others can build upon them as well. And for these APIs that you see here, we're actually the biggest consumer of these APIs and these data sets. I think there might be an echo. So I'm just going to remind folks to mute your phone by hitting star 6. Um, so this is where all of our data is available at sunlightfoundation.com slash API. And um, there, we have six different APIs that you can see here. And we'll be going through a variety of them uh, throughout this presentation. Um, and then additionally, in order to get started, uh, you just have to get in a key. So you can just click here to get a key. And everything we do is free. Um, and there's a, a short privacy policy that we urge folks to read, as well as the API Terms of Service. That you can see here. Um, and then for each of these APIs, I'm going to go back to overview. Uh, you can see that we have a number of different um, uh, information about each of them. So uh, one of which is the, the, the status of the API. You can see here that this API, this data, is operating normally. Um, I am just going to take a moment here and just mute the... The conference has been muted. All 
right. So I, there was just some a little bit of feedback. So um, I just muted everyone. So feel free to unmute your phone if you have any uh, questions, uh, and you could do that by hitting star seven to unmute your phone. So I'm going to go back here to the API page of Sunlight Foundation. And you can see, as I was saying, that uh, you can look at the status of each of these APIs. You can also uh, read the documentation directly by clicking either the Read Documentation or um, on the title of each of the APIs that we have available. And then additionally, what we have done is also created a query builder um, if you click on the Try the API button. And this is a, a really useful resource. Um, because what it does is allows you to get a sense of what's in uh, each of these APIs and identify uh, you know, what are some of the, the different information that's available. So I'm just quickly looking at the capital words one, for instance. Um, and you can put in a phrase. You can put in the different um, uh, state or uh, party, for instance, for, th for this API, and then you can hit Try it, and you'll see uh, some of the, uh, the data that comes back. So this is a great way for folks who are not developers to see what data is in each of these uh, data sets that we have. And it automatically, if you sign up for an API key, you can just save it. So this is my API key is saved um, here. And that's all you need to do to access um, the large amounts and quantities of information that we have. So this is a, a quick primer about sort of Sunlight APIs in general. Uh, and now I'm going to pass it on to Bob Lannon, who's going to talk a little bit more about our Influence Explorer API. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Bob Lannon. I'm a developer on the Influence Explorer team here at Sunlight. I'm just going to uh, share my screen real quick so everybody can check out uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, <laughs> I get an Adventure Time thing? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, Influence Explorer. Influence, Influence Explorer uh, is uh, a project that aims to tie together uh, um, data sets related to influence in, in Washington and beyond. Uh, so we uh, bring together data sets that are published by the National Institute for Money and State, and State Politics. Uh, the Center for Responsive Politics, uh, those are followthemoney.org and opensecrets.org respectively, and um, as well as some other um, uh, direct from the government sources like uh, the Federal Advisory Committee memberships. Um, uh, we also uh, collect lobbying data from the Center for Responsive Politics and, um, and a few other agencies that publish uh, their um, inter agency interactions with, uh, with, with people who are not elected to office, basically. Uh, so this is individuals or major corporations. So uh, to give you an example of uh, what that looks like, um, I don't mean to pick on General Motors, but they have, the, they have one of the richest um, uh, uh, profiles on the site. Um, when you search General Motors, you can see there's a few different, there's a few uh, subsidiary companies that also come up, but General Motors is sort of our big fish here. Um, uh, and as you can see, we have information collected on various different avenues of influence that General Motors has uh, engaged in over the years. Um, so the, um, the, for the top is campaign finance, um, and we can, we can uh, this goes back to at least 1989, um, and the, uh, and, and we can filter these numbers by year. So we can look at during the 2012 election, which had a lot of spending, um, you know, and we can look at the candidates that were supported then um, and uh, see, you know, basically how the breakdown uh, came about. Um, we can also see which kinds of lobbying uh, General Motors is involved in and what issues. Uh, we can look at the specific bills that they lobbied on and, um, Continuing down, we can see regulations. Um, this is this reads from our uh, site, Docket Wrench, which has its own API and um, uh, uh, might be worth um, uh, talking about sometime in the future if you're interested in uh, regulatory comments or uh, or, or document submission. Um, grants and contracts that are given to General Motors uh, by different um, agencies or uh, departments in the government. 
uh, some contractor misconduct information, EPA violations, uh, memberships on advisory committees. Um, so these are all of this data is available to you through Influence Explorer. Um, our screen went dark, oh, but I don't. Okay, okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> so um, Influence Explorer's uh, data is all available. Uh, uh, first and uh, foremost, I like to point out that it's available in bulk. Um, the uh, if what you're doing is uh, a, a project that uh, you'd like to locally uh, cache or store the results that you're going to build an app off of, uh, I highly recommend downloading the bulk downloads uh, here. So you know this will give you all the contributions for some year. Uh, um, lobbying. Um, we also have some links to foreign influence, which we'll talk about later. Um, and uh, basically anything that you can see on the Influence Explorer site is available in bulk. Uh, and if you have any difficulty finding any uh, of those things or, or navigating them, uh, please uh, uh, don't uh, hesitate to shoot me an email and I can clear things up. Um, the Influence Explorer API is, uh, oh, is the same API that InfluenceExplorer.com uses to display its information. We're our biggest consumer of the API. Um, that kind of dog fooding um, uh, lets us uh, get to know uh, what works and what doesn't with our API and uh, uh, you know over time it's been honed to some really useful sort of aggregate views and, uh, and, and, and queries uh, that are, um, are useful for browsable information and, and sort of discoverable um, uh, interfaces. So uh, the different um, things that uh, IE's API does uh, at the top level, uh, break down into entity lookup, which uh, is the ability to search for entities uh, and find their uh, different I identifiers across the different data sources that we collect from. So, uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama, for instance, uh, will have his Influence Explorer IDs, but we'll also have IDs for the, uh, you know, the National Institute for Money and State Politics. Uh, for the Center for Response to Politics, we also have IDs uh, for the FEC, um, and so you know we we collect all those and provide kind of a crosswalk between them. Um, uh, also, his BioGuard ID would also be would also be uh, uh, available. Um, so uh, the other thing that we offer is itemized data. So that's line by line contributions to someone to, to a, a, a candidate or independent expenditures from a committee. Um, the aggregate data, which gives you sort of top ten lists and so the top ten contributors to some campaign or the top ten um, uh, uh, um, uh, targets of independent expenditures. So um, to give you an, an example of, uh, of what uh, this stuff looks like, looks like um, we'll first look at the entity lookups um, uh, uh, method. So let's say we wanted to look for Barack Obama. We could search Obama, uh, type is politician. And um, here I'm using that same API demo uh, that, um, that Amy, off, that Amy uh, had just um, introduced you to a couple seconds ago. And here you can see the query builder builds the URL that we would use to make that call and also um, gives you what the response would be. So Barack Obama has two profiles in, in our database, one for his career at, uh, as a state senator and uh, one uh, as the uh, president. So if we take one of these IDs and we want to learn more about Barack Obama, uh, we can take the Influence Explorer ID and get an, uh, an entity overview. So if we want to look at how he fared during the 2012 election, um, <clears throat> we can put this uh, uh, query together and we'll get uh, most interesting if, uh, at, at a high level um, are things like uh, the uh, links to any state politician and entities. So that's the link to the other entity that we found. Uh, the seat status, uh, he was an incumbent, um, a quick bio, his bio guide ID, um, and uh, and 
Oops, sorry. Oh, Bob, you might explain what a bioguide ID is. Right. So the, congress the congressional bioguide is sort of uh, um, the original Facebook for uh, politicians at the federal level. Uh, gives everybody's uh, a quick, a short bio on everyone, and every um, every um, every elected official gets a unique bioguide ID. Usually, that's the most universal way to um, to identify someone. Um, because as you can see, uh, when, if you look under the external IDs section, the um, IDs uh, at the FEC, uh, Obama has three different um, F uh, three different IDs for his time running for Senate, House, and uh, President. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> but let's say we did just have his BioGuide ID, we could look it up uh, through here. <clears throat> the transparency data uh, endpoint and get back. Um, so, uh, some other some uh, important use cases for um, for our API. Uh, you know, is sort of the, um, the, the the aggregation scripts. This is something that uh, different um, different uh, developers have found very useful. For instance, the top ten individual contributors. Um, we can. This is getting down to sort of the aggregate methods, which um, on the in the docs you can sort of see right here. Uh, the the top ten for 2012. Uh, this gives you JSON back. Uh, you can also ask for it in. Uh, uh, you can ask for any of these uh, uh, results in CSV or uh, or JSON. Um, so uh, you know, uh, after you constructed this query, uh, you only need to change top 10.json to top 10.csv. The Influence Explorer API is very deep, has a lot of different uh, questions that you can ask of it. I encourage you to explore it, and if you have any questions, please. Uh, uh, don't hesitate to contact us either through the IRC channel or email me directly or through our uh, Google group. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, my name is Jacob Fenton. Um, I'm a developer and a reporter here at uh, Sunlight. Um, uh, oh, there we go. If you could get my screen, Amy. Um, uh, and I'm going to share, share desktop. All right. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm, I'm a reporter and a developer here at Sunlight. Uh, before I, I worked here, I worked for a number of news organizations, but one of the things I did was work at, at mediocre newspapers and build uh, news applications. So I like to think about, um, uh, for, for this, for, for you guys, uh, I, I like to think about, you know, how, to, how one could use our APIs to build a news application. Some of the examples I give might not be the, the coolest things ever, um, but that's sort of how I like to think about this stuff. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, three different sites um, that we do, and these are sites that are uh, more geared towards sort of uh, news and immediate sort of uh, things that, that, that are happening, and, and consequently they're, they're not quite as well maintained as some of the rest of the stuff uh, that we do. Um, uh, but um, the, the first thing I'm going to show you is, is a site that's part of uh, Influence Explorer, um, uh, but, but it's slightly different. And the difference is a little bit tricky, so I'm just going to talk you through it. Um, Influence Explorer has all federal data and state data that we collect, whereas realtime.influenceexplorer.com is our, is our attempt to capture everything that's happening at the federal level this cycle down to the minute. Um, and it's something that we started doing because, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of analysis that we do on, on data we've collected, but it takes time. And sometimes you just want to know, know the numbers right now. Um, I, I, I think that there's sort of two ways you can approach building uh, web apps or, or sort of data appliances. I mean, one is downloading all the data at once, and the other is using the API. Um, the, the, all the data for this particular site is, is available via this bulk data download, but there's also another trick for downloading data uh, that I'm going to show you. Um, the API for this site is, is the API powers this entire site, but it's not well documented. Um, we're, we're sort of rolling it out a little bit early because the election is coming up, and, and we think this is a pretty great tool for you guys to use. Um, but all the pages that I'm going to show you, basically, all they do is hit the API and show you results, um, and, and I'm going to demonstrate that. So I'm right now on this newest filings tab, um, and I'm going to click through, uh, actually, I'm going to click through to outside spending. Um, which shows, if you're not familiar with federal campaign finance, outside spending are, you know, when, when a big group like a super PAC 
I decide to spend a ton of money uh, running negative ads or something. Um, there's a lot of outside spending going on, so I'm just going to restrict uh, what I see on this page to uh, outside spending of, of $10,000 or more. Um, and you know that gets me 1,700 results. I can see that the now or never pack here uh, is opposing Tim. I can't say his last name. Health Camp in the first district in Kansas. Um, well, the thing that I want to sort of highlight is that if I hover over this link, I can download a CSV file, and the text of this is really small. But the actual URL that I'm going to use to download a CSV file of all these results is actually a call to the API. Um, this is like again not a great interface. Maybe I should. Well, um, but, but, but if, you, if you actually were to do it, and, and I can see on the bottom of my screen, um, it, it's calling uh, the API to, to, to show me all independent expenditures uh, that fit these criteria. Now, the thing about the, the filter up here is that I could change it, right? So imagine um, if instead I was interested in a particular race. Um, here, for instance, is, is, is uh, all expenditures of $10,000 or more in the North Carolina Senate race, which is uh, a pretty big race. Um, so, you know, in order to populate this page, it's hitting the API. Uh, but, but just as well, one could build an app, a, a news app, or a little widget for someone else's site that, that hit exactly the same API call. So, anytime a, a new independent expenditure popped up in a race you care about, uh, y you could display that. Um, so, so that, that's in some ways the best the best indication we have of big money being dumped into races is, is outside spending. Um, that's not the only only kind of money uh, we care about. Um, uh, you know, the candidates themselves raise money and spend money, um, and uh, this other page I'm showing you uh, hits a different part of the API where we, we, we aggregate all of the filings that are received by the FEC, all the electronic filings. Um, I'm going to show you only filings uh, that are 48-hour notices of contribution received. Um, that gets me 3,600 results. Uh, just for the sake of argument, I'm just going to show in the last seven days, so that gets the number down a little bit more. Um, there's 200 results uh, of these uh, coming in. I could download a file of this, um, or I could restrict this uh, to a particular, a particular candidate. Um, the 48-hour notices are pretty, pretty interesting because in what, what these are are disclosures of uh, money raised uh, in the final days of a campaign. Um, and so what, what it is is kind of your, your best indication of, of how fundraising is breaking at the, at the end of a race. Um, you can do a lot more with these. I, I like to look at how much money is coming from inside Washington versus outside Washington, whether the big big political players have decided that they need to, to swoop in and rescue someone or not. Um, but this is a, a, a good way into that. Um, finally, uh, the, other, the other thing that we do um, is to, to summarize uh, PACs altogether. One of the things that, that uh, is nice to do uh, is, is, is just sort of say, hey, um, you know, who has raised the, uh, who's raised the most? Um, Oh, let's see, is it still here? Oh, it's back. Ah. I'm sorry. Everyone, I support you to know, there's a scam pack called Friends of Miss Betsy Pauline Algar, which I guess. Oh, uh, no. But yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, uh. What was that? Was that in the trillions? Yeah. yeah um, she makes this stuff. Yeah. Make that clear. Yeah, she yeah, makes yeah. This stuff up. yeah. there's someone who has, uh, uh, problems with reality who, who filed those. Um. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 maybe that's not the best way of explaining it. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is a programmatic way to show at, at all times, um, you know, how much a particular PAC has, has spent or raised. Um, and, you know, if, if you're doing any sort of uh, tracking or display of, of PACs that you care about, this is a good way to get into that. Um, the, the, the API calls that are making are, are going to be apparent to you if you use Firebug. Um, uh, but, but please, if anything is not clear, please send me an email. Again, this is not super well documented, um, uh, but it's something that we're going to be rolling up the documentation for in a, in a week or two, so we wanted to let you guys know first. Uh, the next site I'm going to talk about um, is, is a site called Political Absolute. Um, it also is uh, flying under the radar in that uh, the official link to the API documentation isn't even on our API page um, because, you know, we don't want to let just any, anyone know about it. Um, but let me, let me just, just say very briefly what Absolute uh, is. Absolute is uh, a site that collects all of the um, notices of TV ads that are run by political groups that broadcast TV stations. Um, these are ads that uh, are in some way political. Some of them are run by outside groups. Some of them are run by candidates. Um, it looks like this one, for instance, I'm hovering over is for a governor in Tennessee. This one is for a Patriot Majority PAC, which is a super PAC uh, to run in Charlotte, North Carolina, probably in the Kay Hagan race that, that I was showing you before. Um, we could, I could actually sort of click through uh, to one of these and, and 
probably show you one of these documents. Um, the documents themselves are, well, they're, they're interesting. They're a little complicated. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining what they are. But the, the bottom line here is that this document shows, um, what, an ad order for $116,000 um, in, in, in North Carolina. And it's going to, what, run from July 11th through July 24th. Um, the, the way that these documents are, are filed uh, is, is uh, pretty opaque. They're just these, they're scanned in uh, papers from the TV stations. Um, and, and uh, you know, we, we have a process for people to enter the, whoops, sorry. Um, uh, we have a process for people to, to enter the, the actual ad buy amounts. But right now, the, the best thing uh, that they're an indication of is, is who's, who's getting involved in a race. Um, and so what we have, uh, the, the most useful API uh, call that I have, which is going to sound a little bit funny, is this Nielsen DMA ID. Uh, Nielsen is the big uh, TV rating agency. Um, and uh, uh, I'm going to just sort of do this one example call here. Um, that, and, and so they have broken up all the TV markets into, um, it, it, they've given all the TV markets uh, unique IDs. Um, so if, if I actually go into Absolute, I can click on this, on this market report uh, thing. Um, and if, uh, I noticed that there's a lot of papers, paper, paperwork coming in from Duluth right now. I click on Duluth. Uh, if I actually click on this, uh, I get the DMA ID right there. 676 is a DMA ID, DMA ID for Duluth. Um, the API call I just gave you, I believe, is Honolulu. Um, and this is a programmatic way to pull all new ad documents in Honolulu. So if I'm covering a race somewhere, or I just want to, you know, I just want to see who's who's getting into the race. This is a way that we can pull all the all these advertising documents. Now, the documents represent a lot of different kinds of information. The one that I clicked on is an invoice, uh, and there's other documents in there. But I, I, I know I've got another site to, to talk about. So I love to talk about uh, AdSleuth, uh, and, and I can go on about it for a really long time. Uh, so please give give me a call, uh, and I'll tell you what else you can find in there. Um, the, the final site that I want to uh, talk to you guys about is uh, Party Time. Uh, so the, the URL is politicalpartytime.org, and you're, we're lucky enough that um, this one uh, does make it into the, to the API documentation. Um, what Political Party Time does is uh, it, it's, it's a hand-curated database by Sunlight staff of, um, of political fundraisers that we know about. Um, so what we're doing is um, we are hand-entering um, the, uh, the data that we can yeah, uh, the, the data that we can find about um, fundraisers. Um, this is sort of one of the great under-the-radar sources for who's, who's influencing who um, uh, and um, I, 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 in real life. I mean, oftentimes we see like big donor reports. Well, the people who are hosting the fundraisers usually have a lot more at stake than the person who gives $5,000. Um, uh, so this is what one of our, one of our pages looks like we've actually um, entered, you know, even the contribution information uh, um, and, and, and a bunch of sort of data that about the, these individual parties. Um, but we also make this stuff available uh, as, a, as a bulk download, um, which is available from the, if you click on the data and API page, um, it's, it's available in a, a bunch of different uh, formats, um, also uh, via the, the API. Um, the most common use, I think, of the API, or the most, the mo the most useful thing I, uh, about it for someone who actually covers an area is probably just, um, you know, to get a, a feed of new events uh, in, your, in, in the state that you're located in. Um, uh, if I click on the Try It API, I can um, give you guys an example. That's our, our example. Um, oh, that's right. And, and this, again, I, I'm, I'm lucky to, to be demoing a site that's um, uh, it has one of the more opaque uh, APIs, um, uh, but um, um, the, 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 the uh, important uh, ID that we use here is the CRP ID. That's the Center for Responsive Politics ID. Um, and uh, if I were to go to, um, if I were to click on um, uh, the name of a of a legislator. Um, that's not a good one. Um, huh. Let, let me get. Let me find a better example here. Um, um, it, it, the, the the URL of the uh, the page is going to correspond to 
um, the um, ID of um, the candidate in question. Maybe Gary Peters is a better example because he is in. Yeah, so this is this is Gary Peters. This is the page that aggregates all the events that we know about for Gary Peters. Um, and this right here is the CRP ID uh, of Gary Peters. And so if I were to plug the CRP ID into this and try this, um, I'm going to get an API response that says um, these are all the events um, that 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 are benefiting Gary Peters. And um, this is useful both for for sort of a widget type thing, and I know that we're working with INN uh, to develop a widget for a, a site in Maine that, that sort of uh, displays uh, upcoming events. Um, but that's something that you could you could probably adapt to just about anywhere. Um, I should stress that this isn't every every fundraiser; it's only the ones we know about. Um, but the best way to improve our our the coverage is is to encourage folks like you who actually are, who, who who may be receiving these these. Um, these invites or your political reporters, uh, if, if you're a developer, um, is to, to send those in to us um, uh, because it improves really the, the coverage of, of what we have. Um, and I, again, I'm happy to, to talk to anyone uh, after, the, after this in, in, to explain in more detail if I, if I sort of whip through this, but I know that we've got a lot more uh, stuff to see. So I'm going to turn it over now. Hi, this is Lindsay Young. I'm a, also a developer at the Sunlight Foundation, and I'm going to be talking to you about the Congress API today. Um, I'm taking you back to that sunlightfoundation.com API page. And uh, you can see uh, on that page you can get a key, so if you need any uh, key, uh, an API key, go ahead and get that here. And the second one you can see is the Congress API. Uh, the documentation we'll be going to, uh, the link is right there in blue, and the try it is, again, the orange link. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, the documentation first. Uh, just to kind of give you a quick overview, um, there's a whole uh, slew of offerings here. Um, you can get information about legislators. You can figure out uh, what districts uh, people are in, what congressional districts people are in uh, using latitude and longitude or zip code. Um, you can find uh, the congressional districts, again, by location. Uh, you can learn about committees, bills. Uh, you can have a text, we have a text search of bills that's available, amendments, uh, nominations, uh, votes in the House and Senate, uh, floor updates, hearings, and upcoming bills. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things. Uh, I think the most useful thing uh, for most of you is going to be this, uh, the locate function. Um, and so it's, a, it's, a, it's a very straightforward. Make sure you have your API key. Um, and then there's a, a lot of uh, documentation here about the different types of fields that you have. But I'm just going to go uh, straight into the, the, the try it for this particular um, endpoint and show you uh, how it works. So in this case, um, I picked a zip code uh, 92886, that's uh, Southern California, and you click the Try It. Um, my API key is uh, listed above, and it will give you uh, the call that it makes. So this is, this is the call that it's making to the Sun Sunlight Foundation. Uh, the response code, response headers, and then your response body, so you can see um, here, uh, the results in JSON, uh, you have that BioGuide ID, that's that, a great cr crosswalk, it's a unique identifier for Congress, you can see there. We have uh, their birthday, the chamber, uh, contact form, a CRP ID, district, um, FEC IDs, first name, um, it goes on, I'm not going to list everything, but you can see there's a lot of really great information that's here. Um, and so that has my uh, member of Congress. Uh, on, in the House, and then both of the Senators, uh, Boxer and Feinstein, and th that's all uh, returned. Um, if you're using zip codes, sometimes zip codes don't map perfectly to congressional uh, districts, so it will show you all of the Congress people that represent uh, that zip code. Um, but it's really great to just uh, plug in and uh, find out where people are, are coming from and w uh, who represents them. Um, but yeah, you can also see on the try it uh, if you want to try any other particular thing um, that is that's here as well. 
um, when you're actually making a call, it will you know look like this. I have a I have a plugin to make things look a little bit neater. Um, this is on our bills endpoint. This is doing a full set a uh, full search text search on the word gun, um, and then I added highlight equals true so we can um, so I can see where it appears here in the text of the bill um, or the title of the bill. Uh, and that's really useful, I, th I think, if you're looking into like searching legislation and um, bills. We also have um, links and just about anything you need. Um, it's a great resource. It's very broad, and I can't c cover everything. So feel free to contact us after the, this, um, this webinar, and we'd be happy to help you. Great. Uh, thanks, Lindsay. Um, and this is Amy again. And I'm going to be walking you through um, our Open States API. And I know we're going through a lot of our data sets. And I think what we're really trying to do is just give you a, a sense of the content that's in the, the different data sets and really uh, help um, inspire you to different ways in which you can use our data and resources. So uh, I'll be talking about the Open States API. You can find that on the same page that Lindsay showed, uh, our API page that had the Congress API. Um, below is the uh, Open States API. Um, you can click through it and you can see what, what actually is within uh, this data set. And you can see that there are uh, six main uh, data types that we have. We have the metadata for each state. Uh, we have all the bills, and this is all the bills across all 50 states. We have all of the legislators across all 50 states, um, plus DC and Puerto Rico, actually, as well as the committees, as well as um, the events. And the events is uh, not as comprehensive. I believe we have it for over half of the states, uh, but it depends on the data quality in which we are able to uh, to to get that data from each state. And this, uh, we also have the, the uh, relevant districts uh, and their boundaries for the uh, state uh, jurisdictions, whether that is the upper or lower chamber. So this is just to get you uh, an idea of what is that type of data that's in here, and there is definitely a lot of information. And uh, as we were showing through the different APIs you've already seen, um, the Open States also has a query builder that you can try the API. Um, and uh, so you can come in here and you can look up, for instance, let's say I'm interested in looking up a bill. I can put in, uh, I'll put in gun, uh, guns like Lindsay had for on the federal level, but we can do it on the state level. You can also narrow down by a date parameter. So let's say I only care about um, gun le legislation from this year. And then I can just, all I have to do is hit try it. And it's going to make and generate that call for me that you can see here. And then here are the results. So these are the different bills uh, that have gone through uh, this year, have any activities this year um, in the various state legislatures that has uh, mentioned the term, the word gun. And there's actually quite a few. So there are many different parameters that you can put in here to help filter. And um, the, I just want to uh, uh, really stress that like, this is how we are able to build our tools uh, because this data, this API is available. And here is um, what we actually built off of this as uh, the Open States tools, the front facing version of all of the data that you saw in the API. So you can also search for guns here. Um, and that will also uh, populate for you and a little bit more user friendly and a little bit more um, uh, not scary for those who are not developers, uh, way that you can see all the different bills that m mention the term guns. Uh, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how newsrooms have been using the data that we have in open states. Uh, and here is an example from MinPost. They did an analysis this year, uh, 2014, on what are the bills that have been passed. Um, in the Minnesota legislature. And this is a great visualization about sort of the emphasis and the focus of the bills that have been passed. And you can see here that they, um, that they mentioned and cite the Open States Project and the data from here. And then another example that I want to show is the Missouri Legislative Tracker um, that is, uh, allows you to see some of the bills uh, that are moving through on specific issues that they think are, are interesting for their readers. Um, and it has the um, progress and it shows you the latest actions. 
And this is actually pretty great. They built this on top of uh, the, the data uh, or the, the code that NinPost have put together for our legislative tracker. So this is really an uh, open source that is finest that allows uh, uh, organizations and news, uh, newsrooms to really repurpose uh, code from different states. Another example I want to show quickly is um, from uh, VT Diggers, our friends up in Vermont. They built a legislator lookup uh, based on this, uh, based on the Open States API, where you can find um, all of your uh, local state reps. Um, into their tools. They also have other functionalities for looking up uh, legislation and committees as well. And this is now embedded in their site. They don't have to send people off site. And this is just really shows the power of, of the Open States API and uh, populating that information. And then um, lastly, I want to highlight and uh, show the story that uh, New York Times put together um, last uh, last winter, uh, last December, uh, on state gun uh, laws enacted uh, in the year since Newtown. And this is a really great uh, visualization of the different and various state bills um, that they were able to identify through open states. And there, this is a, a great visualization. And on the bottom here, uh, they talk about the, how they use the data from open states as well. So there are lots of different things that you can do with open state data, especially since it is incredibly unique. Uh, because we really we are the only ones that aggregate this information um, on a state level across all 50 states and then make it available uh, for free. So we really encourage people to use this information, use this data, and let us know what you guys can produce um, out of the information that's in the Open States API. So now I'm going to pass it on to Bob to talk about our last API, which is the uh, Capital Words API. Sharing. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, if you're uh, not familiar with Sunlight's uh, Capital Words project, it's, a, it's our Ngram viewer for the, um, uh, 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 for the congressional record. The congressional record is the official transcript of uh, what um, uh, ostensibly is, uh, uh, um, transpired on the floor of Congress that day. It's published every day. Um, uh, it differs from reality in, in some significant ways um, in that uh, it can sort of be uh, edited for, you know, it's mostly edited to take out speech disfluencies and things like that. Uh, but it is occasional, occasionally things are inserted and deleted, and that's, that's, uh, that's a project for another day. But uh, the Capital Words uh, API can, can give you a pretty good idea of some of the sort of zeitgeisty uh, um, um, aspects of uh, what's, what's happening in Congress, what people are talking about. Um, if you, so for instance, uh, you can look at, uh, looking at the, the um, inc incidence of the word gun uh, over time, you can see uh, you can see this nice uh, this breakout. Um, you see certain peaks, and um, uh, you may be able to remember uh, if you're uh, my age <laughs> or older that uh, that um, uh, this was this this peak right here was shortly after the Columbine incident. Uh, this this more recent peak was sh was shortly after um, was shortly after uh, the uh, Sandy Hook Elementary. Uh, which, which happened in uh, December 2012. We see a lot of talk in Congress the following session in, uh, in, in February, January, February, March. Um, so this, uh, this is powered by an API, just like most of our properties. And, um, the, and um, it, it allows you to, to not only um, you know, see that incidence, but also to sort of break it out by party. Um, it also uh, allows you to compare two different terms. Uh, so, um, looking at uh, gun control versus Second Amendment is interesting. Uh, uh, versus gun control versus, uh, say, gun rights. Um, uh, you, you can start to get an idea of, of, of you know, um, how different phrases, um, uh, uh, you know, compare with one another. Um, and there's been a couple of good uses of the Capital Words API recently. The upshot, um, uh, uh, Derek Willis uh, made a, a nice comparison between a collection of pr uh, press releases that the New York Times collects um, and uh, speeches on the floor of Congress using the Capital Words API. So this was about uh, Benghazi coming up um, uh, over time. And you could, um, and sort of the headline here was that there was a, a, a vocal few that are trying to keep the topic alive on the floor of Congress. Um, there was also, uh, Al Jazeera did a, a, did a chart on the 
um, mentions of the debt ceiling in Congress versus uh, uh, what, what the um, um, versus the debt ceiling itself. Um, so, uh, you know, this is a when you're talking about time series data, uh, you know, um, um, showing relationships or, or exploring relationships between things that Congress uh, talks about and um, you know and, and other time series data that you may have is often a really rich uh, source for API or uh, for uh, app development. So if we go to the uh, API page again, uh, the Capital Words API is the first one listed. We can look at the documentation. Um, basically, uh, the, um, the 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 methods uh, break down into time series methods, um, and then top phrases by entity, and the reverse top entities by phrase. Um, and uh, and then there's a there's also a full text search uh, uh, endpoint. So uh, if we um, we can try some of these out, um, like the one that I just uh, uh, said. We can say gun, or you know, uh, uh, this this can also be a multi-word phrase. So we could say gun control, maybe. Um, and there's a, a a lot of other things that we can specify, including how often we're going to sample these. So uh, usually monthly is a good. You know, when we looked at uh, this chart, this is a monthly aggregation. Um, uh, but you could also look yearly or uh, weekly or da daily. I'm sorry, daily. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, limit it to a specific bio guide ID. I mentioned them earlier, um, and uh, and and you know a window of time. Um, but what you get back, this is what the um, this is what the request looks like, and what you get back is a um, is uh, uh, these are different. These are uh, months. So 1996, 04, 1996, 05, um, uh, and these are just counts by month, right? If you wanted to get um, some, if you wanted to find out who said things the most, um, I'm not sure what you mean. The um, so if if you wanted to see uh, who said things uh, the most, we could look at which legislators say gun control the most. Um, oh, I think I'm being told that my screen is too. Yeah, okay. thank you. Um, um, so uh, the uh, hopefully that makes it a little easier to read. Um, uh, here we have uh, um, the the top ten legislators, and these are their bio guide IDs. So uh, that's going to take a, you know an extra lookup step, but um, you know with a with a table. Um, even if you just Google it, <laughs> or go to the, uh, the United States repo, for instance, uh, which is github.com slash United States. Um, you can look at the uh, Congress legislators database, and that um, this will give you um, the, uh, the the bio guide IDs for uh, all members of Congress. Um, so. We just control F for that. Oh, it's in there somewhere. Trust me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so those are two different uh, things you can do. There's also the um, the straightforward uh, full text search. Uh, this is backed by a Lucene store, which does a pretty good job of um, stemming and uh, and 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 uh, uh, query expansion. So, finding uh, uh, searching for the the, the phrase gun should also return things like, uh, you know, gunned or gunning or guns. Um, so, uh, and this is actually going to give you, this will actually give you the results as well. So uh, this will, you know, um, this will show you, uh, you know, what, what, which results you're getting and, you know, you can choose to uh, uh, display it um, in your own way with also with uh, links to the part of the um, of the congressional record uh, that that came from. Uh, um, I might be interested in looking at how their their member of Congress, what their member of Congress says the most. So that might be right. Yeah. So um, if I wanted to look at my uh, member of Congress, uh, I can look at I can find their bio guide ID. I guess I can also just go to the congressional bio guide, right? Right. Mm -mm. um, I don't think so. Um, but uh, um, so you know, uh, um, let's uh, look in uh, uh, District of Columbia. This is like the teaser. Um, uh, let's look in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I can't. Oh, should look for the current one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 2014. Uh, so I can look at uh, say Bob Casey. 
and uh, his bio guide ID will be up here in the URL. Um, <clears throat> I can come up here. My screen's all zoomed in, so it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> it's um, easier for everyone else to see on the call. <laughs> good call. Um, <clears throat> so let's just shrink this. Um, we can get the top phrases uh, that he uh, says. So we can say this is a legislator and uh, the, let me do this. <clears throat> um, so the top thing that he says is uh, president. And <laughs> um, and you can see he says a 247 times. That's the count. That's right. You also get the TFIDF weight for his, which um, if you're familiar with uh, 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 word indexing makes sense to you. If you're not, basically it means uh, it's a little bit more informative than uh, raw count. It's how, how, how uh, important this word is, basically. Um, but so uh, that gives you, you know, yet another view over the congressional record. Yeah, and sometimes these results are fairly um, expected and typical, but sometimes they can be very revealing. Um, we did a similar uh, analysis uh, back in 2012 uh, when Rick Santorum was uh, surging in the GOP uh, presidential nomination and the list of words that uh, he used the most were quite revealing, uh, and you can look it up on, uh, in fact, I think Bob's doing it for you. Uh, but, uh, so, I, you know, I encourage you, uh, this is Kathy from the reporting group, and I, I encourage you to use this tool to check out your own legislators, um, because it can be sometimes pretty funny and sometimes pretty revealing. Let's see, here we go. <clears throat> this gives us... Oh, I should sort by, uh, <clears throat> I, I recommend sorting by TFIDF. Uh, as you can see, if you sort by count, you get things that are like con not, not content words, like and or is a mar was were be being been, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, if you don't go by that, then you get lots of uh, more informative things like partial birth, abor abortion, procedure, baby, senator, abortions, row, fetus. He's pretty... Uh, he's pretty laser focused on some topics. So um, these are, yeah, so as Kathy said, the, the, the very uh, revealing um, uh, uh, counts. Great. Thank you so much, Bob. Uh, so I know we went through quite a few um, of different uh, APIs, and that ranges really from the campaign finance uh, types of data that we have from IE and real time and AppSleuth. Um, and, and even political party time as well in terms of the influence data to congressional information that Lindsay covered on Congress API and also the Capital Words API that Bob uh, just reviewed um, and on a state level, the open states one that I covered. So I know there's a lot of information here and we have just a couple of minutes. If folks have any questions, feel free to unmute your phone um, by hitting um, star seven to unmute your phone. And then, uh, or you can feel free to chat in the information on the left-hand side of the, the chat bar. I know there's, we've been chatting uh, a lot of the, the different links and the resources and the websites that we've been showcasing. So um, all of this as uh, has been for the other two webinars as well is going to be archived. Uh, and we'll um, email out the archived webinar um, when, when we have that done. So is there, are there any, any questions online? Uh, Marjorie has a question online, just wants to know if the TFID is defined um, anywhere in the documents. Uh, they, it may be. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not the current maintainer of Capital Words. Uh, uh, but if we look at TF, oops. Oh, and so while Bob is looking up that, Wendy has a question and just wants to know if all of the items on the list are, are on the sunlightfoundation.org API page. And uh, the answer is most of them are. Um, so you see here on the APIs and data sets uh, uh, overview that I provided earlier, there are the two that uh, Jacob covered, um, the, actually just one, the, just the political ad sleuth that is not on um, the API page, but you can also find that through the political 
www.adsleuth.com uh, tool itself. Uh, and you can find that in the About Us and the API section. Yeah, and, and the real-time portion of Influence Explorer isn't on that page either. But I mean, please email me. I, I, what I really should say is that we are looking for, for beta testers. I mean, the API works. It's just we haven't documented it yet. And um, if you're interested in being among the first uh, to work with it, please uh, send me your Amy an email and we will hook you up. Yeah, and I just also pulled up here all of our contact information. <laughs> so feel free to uh, shoot us an email if there's any questions about any of the data sets that we have. Uh, we maintain all of this information in-house at Sunlight Foundation. So I know our developers are always very eager to help uh, if there's any questions. Um, uh, I have a question about the TFIDF uh, weights. Uh, as, as far as I know, they're the ones that are uh, I, can't, I can't find them, uh, the explanation of that in the documentation. As far as I know, they're the ones that are uh, computed out of the box by Lucene, which would be the frequency of the term over uh, across the uh, corpus uh, divided by the um, log of the inverse of <laughs> the number of documents that the, uh, that the term uh, appears in. So basically, if you have a term that appears in every document in the corpus, that's going to get a very small TFIDF weight, uh, uh, but if you have a do if you have a term that happens a lot but don't but doesn't happen in many documents, that's maybe a good topic term for those documents. Uh, so that will have a high TFIDF weight. Great. Are there any other questions? Um, feel free to chat them. In. We just have a uh, two more minutes left. Um, and as always, we are really are more than happy to answer any of these questions. And also, you know, if we are going through the documentation for the APIs, if anything doesn't make any sense, or if you think that there could be a, a better explanation for various sections, please feel free to let us know, and we'll be more than happy to help. Okay, well, seeing as there are no other questions, we just want to thank uh, everyone for joining us today and also thank uh, Denise at INN for working with us to put this together. Uh, and we're really uh, excited and proud to have been able to provide these webinars. And if you have any uh, other future webinar suggestions or thoughts, uh, please feel free to uh, contact Denise or myself or Kathy and any of the folks that you see here. Um, so thank you once again for joining us, and just a special thank you for folks who have joined us for all three of the three-part webinar series, and just wish everyone a great day. Thank you so much. <laughs>